We're one week away from BlizzCon. Xbox is restructuring amongst uh, amidst a completed deal. They did not wait. Good for them. Sarah Bond. Yeah. Moving up in the world. Killing it. Anyway. Yeah. In case you're curious, this is the Gamers 2 Podcast. Your weekly roundup of news and commentary related to the video game industry and anything else that might pique our interests. Peak. In case you're curious, it's October 27th. And we never say what the date is. So. That's true. There it is. Technically, it's always in the description. Okay. Did not know that. Somewhere I not, do. I'm not privy to that information. That's need to know. I mean, if he ever looked at our podcast on any podcast service, he would see it. Wow. We're calling me out. I think. Because I always put it in this. There's like a sub thing where it's the title of the thing and then the sub thing. And I always put podcast four and then the date that we recorded. All right, there it is. But if you wanted to not hear us drivel on, you could watch the World Series. You could. It's three to two right now in the bottom of the third inning. Arizona is up three to two. Game one, George W. throwing out the first pitch. Yeah, looking good. It it was weird. It was. Uh, back in the day when we had semi-normal presidents, which is a, like <laughs> which is of, kind think, of weird to think. For, think of what you're saying. I know. Times, man, the times. Or you know, if you're if you're not a baseball person, you watch the Mexican GP this this weekend in Mexico City. George Bush doing yeah. the doing the first lap there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's driving the he's driving the safety car. Yep. You imagine? <laughs> They're like, yeah, he's in the Merc. <laughs> uh, that would be great. Or you know what you could do is you could say, "Hey Nate, hello, hit me with some new games I could play." And then I would punch you in the face because each week I get re-tattooed on my knuckles. Games. Top five games of the week. Uh, <laughs> it's right, a really enough. expensive process for not a lot of people to ask you know, me. Passion. You got to follow your passion. Exactly. But like number one, Dungeon Full Dive for the PC. Number two, Just Dance 2024 edition for the PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. The only thing making Ubisoft money. Number three, it's <laughs> yeah, true. Number three, three minutes to eight for the PC. Number four, City Skylines 2 for the PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Number five, Dark Envoy for the PC. Number six, Lord of the Rings Return to Moria. That one surprised me. Forgot that that was coming out. Yeah, it's officially here. And Matt and I want to play it, but I we won't. would love to. What he said. Well, he won't. Yeah. yeah There's yeah. a chance I do. Yeah. Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1 for the PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. Dave the Diver comes to Switch. Dinosaurs of Mission Dino Camp for the PC, PlayStation, and Switch. Number 10, Ghostbusters Rise of the Ghost Lord for PSVR 2. Number 11, Ghost Runner 2 is officially out for PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Number 12, Kickback Slug the Cosmic Courier for PC. Number 13, my most excited game. Alan Wake 2 for PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Number 14, Bratz Flaunt Your Fashion Complete Edition for the PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. And number 15, DreamWorks Trolls Remix Rescue for the PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. Number 16, Hero Survival for the PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. And number 17, Murder is Game Over. Which sounds like a cozy title. Oh, yeah. For PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. All right. You would see that in the Barnes and Noble cozy section talking about uh so and so went to a video game convention and found a dead body and murder is game over is 100% the title for that. I can picture the entire thing. The entire synopsis. Okay. Finds love cuz she was going there to meet up with her online hottie but finds a dead body. See what you did there. I liked it. And it was a million dollars. I'm looking up Metacritic. Uh, for? Uh, Alan Wake 2. 92 last I saw. Uh, it's 89 currently. And then uh, Return to Moria. I was looking up as well. 
which is God, it's a shit map. Uh, fifty-five for Return to Moria. User Critically, score of seven point eight. Okay. Uh, I did not check the user score on Alan Wake, but I'm going to because uh, I feel like that's probably more relevant. Yes. If my phone will work. My battery is so bad on my phone now. I've charged my phone two to three times a day. Wow. Yeah. iPhones. No user score yet because there's it only... Just, it just came out. Yeah, there's yeah. only four ratings. So. I don't know if it's necessarily... I mean, it is an iPhone thing because iPhone traditionally small battery. Well, then I just know traditionally two years are going to start killing your battery. You don't say about iPhone users. Small battery, small penis. Um, I say a lot of other things. <laughs> <laughs> also, though, it's a mini. So, like, take the small battery and then cut it in half. Ah, mm, yes. So, like, you know, my flip phone LG has probably a bigger battery than this thing does. Both in capacity and just physical size. <laughs> yeah. All right. I remember mm. the day when you could just take the battery out of the back of the phone. Those were the days. The envy. And then there's like, it's indestructible or whatever. People are driving it over with cars and shit. Mm-hmm. Hell, I'd take a good old Blackberry. Oh, I, don't, I don't know that I need that. The old Blackberry Messenger. Oh. That was like, I want, was, the, I want my T flip back. That was the, uh, the iPhone Messenger before there was iPhone. That's true. <laughs> and they gave you a full keyboard. Yep. And I don't uh, mean like a phone keyboard. I miss like the um, keyboard. I miss, uh, I mean, my first LG flip phone. And then it had the, uh, I don't even remember what it's called, but the texting where it was like, um, there's a name for it. I can't remember. T9? Yeah, T9. I guess it would be, yeah, T9. Yeah. Predictive T9 texting. Yep. I miss I, that. Could you text with T9 now, though? I like, don't know do if you... I could. I mean, at the time, I could do it really fast and I didn't have to look at my phone, which. Yeah. I miss that. I can do it for the most part now with my phone too, though. Like once I get used to a keyboard, I can get away with it. Mm-hmm. But I have to just like also double check that it doesn't autocorrect to something ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. T nine, man. That's good shit. That's a good time. Was. Was. It was <sighs> one of those, not the sidekick, but the T flip. Yeah. And the T flip. Where I could see the line from the flip just mm. after I, how my, however many uses of it. Fucking. Because you get bored and you'd flip it. It was like fucking fidget spinner. The only people, the, the only people I knew that had sidekicks were like fucking on Boost Mobile and from the city. Oh, yeah, because nobody up here had a sidekick. I don't even yeah. know. I think I was the only person that had a T flip that I knew. Because everybody was like, oh my God, let me see your phone. Was and the, was like, was oh. the Envy the one that would clamshell that opened up? Like, uh, Yeah. Yeah, okay. Or my ex girlfriend's had a had Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Um, yeah, man. George Bush. She and George Bush is making me all like nostalgic. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what it is. I want that on as a quote on a t shirt. <laughs> Can you imagine wearing that around? People would probably be like, you know what, I get I get that. <laughs> <laughs> I saw George Bush throw out the first pitch at the 2023 World Series and it started making me feel nostalgic. Yeah. The good old days. Uh, holy shit. All right. You feeling, uh, what are you feeling? I'm feeling evens. Oh, even Steven over here. <clears throat> All right. Another week. Another round of layoffs. PlayStation. You don't have a job. You, <laughs> you don't have a job. Uh, sadness for no reason, really. Record profits. Anyways, PlayStation Support Studio Visual Arts has been hit with another round of layoffs, with several former employees sharing on social media last week that they'd been let go. Visual Arts was launched in 2007 and is known for working as a support studio on The Last of Us, Uncharted, and Spider Man. Uh, Roblox China has been hit with layoffs, affecting employees at its headquarters and teams working in the U.S. A spokesperson confirmed that 15 people were let go due to an evaluation of the operational structure of the company. 
Dreams and Little Big Planet maker Media Molecule is reportedly looking to cut nearly 20 staffers from the studio. The studio said, quote, Media Molecule has made significant strategic changes during the past year, including shifting our focus from dreams to our new project, end quote. It's still, which is still wild. Yes. That they're shifting off of dreams, not because of what it, like it not being a success and they need to keep making something, but like dreams, the whole joke was like, hey, we built a game engine, here it is, and it's like, Okay, so you're going to keep developing that and like using it, right? No. No, you guys mess with that. We're going to make something else. It's like that's not how that's not how game development works. It's like, then why'd you sell us it? Well, shut up. You're like, I hate it here. <laughs> <laughs> what if Dreams is the reason uh uh what's his face had to retire? Sean Layden? No. Oh. Ryan? Yeah. It'd be really weird. You, that he was like a giant promoter of it, and then it failed, and then yeah. he had he was forced out for dreams. I mean, failure. dreams was clearly never going to be a commercial success. No, I mean, I could have told you that when they announced it. I think we did. We, I think we did. Yeah. Um. All right, and finally, Hungary-based animation studio Digic has laid off 35 members of staff, as reported by Forbes Hungary. The Embracer Group subsidiary cut approximately 10% of its workforce following an internal reorganization earlier this year. So, layoffs abound. The old layoff train chugging through. Meanwhile, all these companies are like, record profit, record profit. Maybe not Embracer. They spent too much money. Yeah, but they end up like they lost the Saudi deal, which yep. is a shit ton of money. Yeah, they kind of got screwed a little bit. They're in, they're in kind of like a like they're not going to be in a problem, but because they're just almost publishers and own seven thousand studios, I yeah. expect like random ones to close every now and then, like they have. Yeah, yeah. It just do be what it do be. For sure, do this be is, in. This is bases loaded three two and two outs. So. High, uh, high stress situation. Zach Gallon highest pitch total so far this game. I don't want to like you know distract everybody from the game, but at the same time, like she getting the play by play. Stro- oh, that- walked him. Tie game. That no. throw did have some weird movement though. Yeah, kind of did this like. Hit him with that like sweeper slider action. Number two, for the first time in three years, for Microsoft. For the first time. Sorry. CEO Satya Nadella's pay targets did not include a specific growth milestone for Xbox Game Pass. A Microsoft SEC filing spotted by Axios instead shows Nadella's only games related. Oh, God. So, so, <laughs> many, so many words. Only games related performance based incentive for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2023, was to grow Xbox content and services revenue by 4.4%. Over 95% of Nadella's annual target compensation opportunity is performance based. The Xbox target only accounted for 10% of his performance based pay targets with the largest category being to grow Microsoft's cloud revenue, which was weighted at 30%. Xbox revenues did not meet the 4.4% growth target, instead only growing by 0.7%. Axios's, ana- Axios's analysis shows that Nadella previously had targets based on the subscriber growth of Xbox Game Pass. Last year, Microsoft aimed for 73% growth in Game Pass subscribers, but the actual result was 28%. The filing lists Nadella's total cash and stock compensation for the 12 months ended June, 20, or June 30th, 2023 at... 48.5 million. Axios noted this is down from 54.9 million in the previous year. All of this to say, Microsoft's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, I feel like their numbers when it comes to Xbox are like really um, out there. Like I, I feel like their, their shooting is always out there. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're going to want, we want 120% growth turnover. You're like, what the fuck is wrong <laughs> with you guys? Those are like, you know, like four point four percent is still a large That's respectable. number. Yeah. But it's like a 
it's an okay goal. But it's a large number to realize. In a year where you didn't have anything. Mm-hmm. You had Halo Infinite, which you didn't launch complete. Yep. Is Redfall so, included in there as well? Is it no. last year, June? I don't think so. Ending June 30th. I remember it was pushed. Maybe it came out right before the end. I don't even know. But that doesn't include Starfield. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be curious what his goals are this year. Also, fiscal years I hate. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I think they might start to shift what they shift what their goals are focused on. Yes, I know. I agree with that. I think they're going to shift constantly based on whatever they decide to focus on that time. But yeah, like if if the number had stayed at four point four percent going into this year, and they're just like, well, hey, we want to, or to make up the difference and say three point eight or three point seven because I can't do math. Um, three point seven percent, like make up the rest of it. Does Starfield push that? Potentially. Time will tell. Time will tell. Number three. Time after time. Warframe maker Digital Extremes has announced that James Schmalls is no longer CEO. James what? Schmalls? Schmalls? Killing me. What? Come on. Sandlot reference. Oh. Never was a fan of that movie. I know. Hot hot take. I'm having heart palpitations. <laughs> Schmalls will remain on the company's board of directors. Steve Sinclair, previously creative director, will step into the CEO role. Sinclair will still continue to oversee the development of the studio's next title, Soul Frame. Really stepping away from that one. Smalls established Digital Extremes in 1993. The studio has developed titles such as The Darkness 2, Dark Sector, and its current free-to-play title, Warframe. If there was a T, I would say it might be Schmaltz. That's what I want to say, but there's no T. Yeah, but I don't... Schmaltz. 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 Curious what Soul Frame's going to be. Warframe and Soul Frame, man. Yeah, I mean, there, there. It's, I don't know. I never did get on the uh, the old Warframe bandwagon. I've so. tried it like a couple times. Yeah, I think I tried it once, and every time I'm like, okay, I it f- like feels okay to play, mm-hmm. but I just never know what the fuck to do. It's never clear. It's never explained. Everybody I'm playing with is already so far ahead. I'm like, I, you know, I fuck this. I don't, I don't care. Basically sums up my life. <laughs> wow. Shit. Never mind. <laughs> Got him. Number four. Nintendo has removed Need for Speed Drink and Drive Simulator from the... Need knew- for Sprint Spirit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I did the same thing initially, and I was like, oh, I'm going to have to make a point to get this yeah, right. Yeah, once it says Need 4, I go, oh, home run, 4-3. Yeah. Um, and Nintendo has removed Need for Spirit Drink and Drive Simulator from the eShop following an investigation by Peggy. The game was allegedly allegedly assigned a Peggy 3 Plus rating through the International Age Rating Coalition, which is a free self-submitted process. This would suggest that the game is suitable for all ages, despite including alcohol and tobacco. A game involving such substances must be rated Peggy 16 or Peggy 18 per the European Video Game Cont- Content Rating System. Need for Spirit Drink and Drive Simulator is rated Peggy 16 on the Epic Game Store and unrated on Steam. Need for Spirit Drink and Drive Simulator. So it's got to be like spirits as in alcohol. Yeah, yeah. I hope it's got like wheelbase support. That could be a fun game. You know, just get, get hammered and like get hammered in real life man. that's true so it's on the switch so do you think they actually use the gyro in it might be on something there and no matter where you turn it goes like, the it wrong. gives you that like drunk feeling like when you're like so you play drunk your, in gta or something you play your switch with a bucket oh god because you're just gonna want to vomit because simulated drunk always sucks i um i don't know how i like i don't know what to expect from this World Series. 
that's the best time, best type of World Series. I know. I was going to say earlier that this is probably going to be one of the better World Series, just because it's like they're v- very evenly matched. Yeah. Rookie of the year, right there. I'm happy for him, Carbon Carroll. Real happy for him. Where was I? You just talked about need for spirit. And I'm on number five. Microsoft has released more Microsoft talk, money talk. Microsoft has money, released, money, money. Yeah. Put it in my pocket. Wow. What the fuck? Look at that dude's hair. Oh, that's Lawrence Goriel Jr. He used to play on the Blue Jays. He looks like a fucking purple Jay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft has released the results for the first quarter of its financial year. For the three months ended September 30th, 2023, the company reported total revenues of $57 billion, up 13% year on year, including $13.7 billion, up 3%, from the more personal computing division, which includes Xbox. Xbox content and services revenue rose 13% year on year, uh, driven in part by the launch of Starfield. Although hardware sales were down 7%. In its investor call around the results, Chief Financial Officer Amy Hood reported that Starfield's launch day set a new record for the most new Xbox Game Pass subscriptions in a single day. Which reminds me, I had to cancel mine. Microsoft also <laughs> noted... <laughs> Microsoft also noted that the addition of the IP owned by Activision Blizzard, um, with the addition of the IP owned by Activision Blizzard, Xbox now has $13 billion franchises. Including Call of Duty, Candy Crush, Diablo, and Warcraft. Yeah, so they just gained four. (laughs) Yeah. 13 franchises that have made a billion dollars. Wild, dude. That dude's hair is freaking me the fuck out. It's just purple. Purple. Who's this guy? Mike Hazen. He looks really young. That baseball, baseball youth. Yeah. I've hit that point in uh, that age where, like, everybody there is as old as we are or younger. Well, I'm seeing all these younger people than me who are like wildly more successful, and I'm like, wow, I fucking suck. Cool. I'm depressed. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's talk about number six then. Nintendo is positioning itself to crack down on online content that it considers to infringe upon its copyright with the company's newly updated content guidelines. Nintendo explains, quote, content that features unauthorized game consoles and or software not licensed by Nintendo or features video images, sound sources, etc. that cannot be used in regular gameplay extracted through game software via data mining or other methods, end quote. With these new guidelines, Nintendo could issue DMCA takedowns to videos, content about patched games and emulators. The issue, the update could affect the online promotion of retro themed consoles from companies such as Analog, Polymega, and Hyperkin. Nintendo could also crack down upon online social media posts that speak about content data mined from games, such as possible character reveals. Nintendo will be out here and be like, you guys having fun and doing things? Fuck you. And continuing the trend, Nintendo will issue new community tournament guidelines that impose age, revenue, and hardware regulations. Among the changes, tournaments may include up to 200 in-person and 300 online competitors. Nintendo, in part, said, quote, The total value of cash prizing a single organizer can offer through community tournaments in a 12-month period must be no more than the equivalent of 9,000 pounds or 10,000 euros. End quote. Additionally, the Mario Maker explained, quote, the use of game consoles, accessories, and software not licensed by Nintendo, unquote, violates regulations. This point drew criticism as social media users expressed that accessibility, accessible controllers for disabled gamers are third-party accessories. Nintendo doesn't make an accessible controller of its own, but it does have an officially licensed third-party option in Hori's Flex Controller for the Switch. The community tournament guidelines will be effective November 15th. 
They're really cracking down. They want that control. Nintendo's all about the control. They want to control you. That's true. They're the man. Got to stick it to the man. Speaking of sticking it to the man, Microsoft has announced some pretty significant leadership and organizational changes in their gaming division. Xbox and ZeniMax will be brought closer together to cooperate more smoothly, perhaps taking a cue from PlayStation Studios to try to avoid another Redfall situation. Matt Bodie, previously head of Xbox Game Studios, will now be president of game content and studios, overseeing ZeniMax as well as Xbox. In an internal memo quoted by The Verge, Microsoft Gaming CEO Phil Spencer said, quote, We believe that an expanded co- gaming content organization, one that enables Xbox Game Studios and ZeniMax's development studios to collaborate effectively together, will empower those world-class studios to do their best work in growing our portfolio of games players love. ZeniMax will continue to operate as a limited integration entity led by Jamie Leader, president and CEO, reporting to Matt. All ZeniMax Development Studios and ZeniMax Central Services teams will continue reporting to Jamie to maintain and optimize current content development and production cycles. Also, to deepen our partnership and accelerate mutual learning, a number of ZeniMax leaders will now report to those Microsoft leaders with whom their work most closely aligns, end quote. Long quote. Long quote, just to say, you're all reporting to Microsoft people now, bitch. Another big shakeup is that Sarah Bond. Sarah Bond. Sarah Bond. Bond. Sarah. Sarah Bond. Previously corporate VP at Xbox has been promoted to president. She'll now oversee both hardware and software platforms. There are some changes on the marketing side, too. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella announced those with an official blog post. With regards to Xbox, Amy Silverman and her consumer sales organization, have been moved under gaming, reporting directly to Phil Spencer. Microsoft CEO Sonya Nadella said Microsoft would double down on being a game producer and publisher following the Activision Blizzard acquisition, suggesting that even more investments after the $68 billion may be on the way. I feel like, you know, they got the deal done and they've got a bunch of plans that they plan on instituting. I mean, they've, had like, a, they've had a while to think about it. Yeah. They're going to crack the whip, I think, a little bit. All right, here we go. Booty, up. Bond, up. Bond and booty, one and two. Kodak, get the fuck out. January, I don't want to see your ass around here anymore. Deuces. Zenimax, Bethesda, don't fuck up again. Oh, thrilling times, thrilling times. Number nine, Xbox Partner Preview. It's a thing. I don't know what it is. Let's find out together. Recap, bitches. Recap. Recap. <laughs> Go to. We'd be the worst, like, hype man at a place. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Oh, what we're doing. What are we? What are we cheering for? I'd be like the annoying dude who just repeats the same thing that the other guy says. You know, like, what, what am I like? Josh at? Young or Chung? Young, Young, woo, woo. That's the whole time. That's yep. all it is. <laughs> Until someone throws like a fucking full beer at my head or something. <laughs> beer, beer. <Woo>! <laughs> 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 just the fucking peanut guy just goes, huh? Beer hauls off and hits you in the face with one. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Here is what was at this so called Xbox partner preview. Like a dragon, Infinite Wealth will continue the series tradition of extravagant side activities, giving players the opportunity to manage an entire tropical island resort in Animal Crossing fashion. I believe it's people in animal suits as well. Bunch of fucking furries. Uh, <laughs> Power Wash Simulator developer Future Lab unveiled its new game, Ikaro Will Not Die, a spiritual successor to the studio's Velocity series that promises, quote, satisfying flow state, end quote, roguelike action. Roguelike action. Uh, everybody's gone to the rapture and amnesia, a machine for a, for a pigs developer. What the fuck? No, Amnesia, no. a machine for pigs? There you go. 
uh, developer The Chinese Room offered a first look at its narrative-driven first-person horror, Still Wakes the Deep. Its setting is a spooky 70s North Sea oil rig. Spooky. Spooky. Oil rig is like a creepy Yeah. There's been a, there's been a few um, movie choices, too, that have been trying to kind of settle on that. Yeah, the oil rig. Uh, developer Tayans, 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 what I don't really give a shit. Uh, Robocop Rogue City got a fresh look at its gameplay, including a face-off against the powerful Ed 209. You, you know Ed 209, right? The old big robot with the three toes and try goes down the stairs and ends up falling. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I'm talking about it. Just, okay. <laughs> no, I, I am I am yes anding because it's fine. I gotta I gotta say this. Not a Robocop fan. Never seen Robocop. Oh, you never seen Robocop shoot the dude in the dick? I've seen like the clips. Oh, okay. But I haven't I've never watched the movie. It's a solid like eighties movie. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I've heard. It's like it's in that it's, pretty it's in that echelon of like just all of those like cult eighties movies. Yeah. It's like, I mean, I think what sets this one I don't know, actually it is kind of an eighties thing too. It's pretty brutal. Like in the beginning, uh, you know, you got fucking uh, what's his face there, Murphy, who was played by uh, I can't remember his name, but he was uh, a professor at SU for a while. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he. Oh gets, yeah, you mean Frank? He gets uh, his name might actually be Frank. That'd be really fucking funny. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I gotta look this up because I think it might genuinely be Frank. I hope it's not. <laughs> there's no way I pull Frank out of that. Yeah, you, there, there's no way I go. I say ah, no, it's it's Peter Weller. Oh, okay. Whew. Um, and when he when he dies because he gets he gets killed by a bunch of like gangsters. Uh, like there's a scene where like you see him like this. He's like like on his knees, like oh, like telling like, but you know, trying to get them to stop shooting at him and the fucking sh- shotguns his hand right off oh okay so it's pretty gory there's the part where the dude gets his skin all melted off it's it's old thing yeah but it's gonna get it melted off that's happened before yeah but it's just that it's like because it what's nice about 80s movies is it's all practical effects still so you know, it's kind of yeah, got like yeah. that like little bit of grossness going on anyways back to video games practical um, or attempted practical anyway yeah yeah uh and it's like all like you know like the cars are cool and the bikes are cool yeah it's yeah 80s. All right, we got a closer look at developer Microbird's Dungeons of Hinterberg, in which players socialize and dungeon dive across the once sleepy Austrian mountain resort. Oh, it's that one. Okay. I remember what we're talking about now. It's like, hey, this sounds familiar. I remember the, the trailer now. Spirit of the North 2 announcement. Players take control of a new lead fox who's partnered with a flying companion. There's no release date. Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake Eater is the previously announced Metal Gear, Metal Gear Me, Stroke Time Metal Gear Solid 3 remake from Konami's internal development team. The first in-game footage was shown, including a little bit of gameplay, confirmed to be using Unreal Engine 5. I did see that. That was interesting. Manor Lords is a strategy game that sees players attempting to rustle up a thriving medieval town. It promises in-depth city building, large-scale tactical, tactical battles. I have, like, cotton mouth right now for some reason. Plus, complex economic and social simulations. Uh, it's launching for PC on April 25th, and it's a day one game pass release. Developer Embark Studios has announced that its free-to-play team-based shooter, competitive shooter, The Finals, will be holding a cross-platform open beta for Steam, Xbox Series, and PlayStation 5 from yesterday to November 5th. I'm going to be trying to get into it. All right, do it up. I loaded it up earlier today, Mm -hmm. and I just got it in queue, and that's all I got for a while. Then I said, all right, screw this, I'm going to go play a game. Yeah, that's fair. Arc Survival Ascended developer uh, Studio Wildcard's uh, controversial remake made an appearance with a first look at some gameplay. And then finally, Alan Wake 2 got a release trailer for its big day of today. Woo! Yeah! That was a neat little... Sounds like it was a neat little showcase. Yeah. Not like that weird Apple showcase that's on the way. 
Oh my a spooky God. showcase. It's supposed to be game like uh I keep seeing articles it's like it's gonna be high end game related. They gotta fucking sell those VR headsets somehow. Apple. But, but you know what it means? We're now to number ten. Which is the one and only. Rumor Roundup. That's probably gonna be really loud. Fuck on the mic. Yeah, fuck. They should have known. They should have. I prefaced a big, big lead into that. That's true. That's Cloud true. Cloud Imperium game claims Star Citizen's long promised and much delayed single player campaign, Squadron Forty Two, is feature complete and is entering the polishing phase. Uh, so there's a release date, right? Absolutely not. It's not going to be released. According to Tom Henderson, an extraction-based multiplayer shooter spin-off game based on Far Cry is in development at Ubisoft Toronto. The game is supposedly set in fictional version, fictionalized version of Alaska called Alashnika. Karishnikov? Uh, because that's what Ubisoft needs to be making. In this inhospitable land, players will be forced to scavenge resources to make all kinds of things. They'll have to hunt animals for their leather, harvest plants to craft medical items, find weapon parts to create weapons, and so on. A hideout will be the player's base of operations where they can safely store all of their hard-earned loot. The hideout can be shared with party members. And if you're saying, Nate, Matt, I've heard this story out of Ubisoft before. I thought they was what they were doing with The Division. I would say you're correct. So uh, why? You know, this is going back uh, a year now, roughly. Remember when I believe it was you and you said this, or at least to the effect, and then it was like, ah, it might have been a Game Awards, actually. Okay. It might have been a Game Awards or a Summer Game Fest, one of the two. And we saw a trailer start, and we went, that's an Ubisoft game. Because they all started looking the same. Yeah, you could just I mean, you could see it and know. Yeah, they're all the same game. Now they're just making the same game again. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be like you told it, but it's in a different world, and it's like it looks the same. Why does it look the exact? It same? plays the same. Why, it's got the same mechanics. Why did you put a Why did you put a, a new sticker on it? You didn't even release the first one yet. Heartland's still not out. I have. Um... I have almost no faith in Ubisoft. It's very, like, the last remaining faith I have is specifically in Massive. Yeah, 100%. I'm hoping Mirage is good when I eventually play it, but, like... I We probably share similar sentiments where I feel the same way. Like, I'm I'm hoping Mirage is, like, refreshing, like a little, little nice jaunt. Um, and... I'm curious about Star Wars Outlaws, but there, you know, we'll discuss that in a second as well. David Scott Jaffe, the creator of God of War and the Twisted Metal series, has said to have heard that Sony's head of internal production at PlayStation, Connie Booth, has left PlayStation. Which has been confirmed now. Yeah, which has been confirmed. Uh, spokesperson from PlayStation confirmed it, but no details. Always a fun one when they leave PlayStation like that. Via some data mining. Diablo 4's expansion might be called Lord of Hatred. The leak also says the Curast region from Diablo 2 will be added alongside several new features, including but not limited to a new spirit-born class with a nature theme, a mercenary system that supposedly allows players to hire NPCs, outfit them with gear, and level them up in dedicated skill trees, the ability to craft corrupt runestones, and raids. We'll see. Still early. Yeah. Probably early to be talking BlizzCon. about DLC. We just got the season two. I don't know. So BlizzCon. let's see what yeah, BlizzCon fine. But let's you know, let's wait. Ubisoft says that it has delayed a large game that was previously planning to release by the end of March twenty twenty four. The company has decided to launch this other large game in fiscal year twenty four twenty five, so as to maximize its value creation. Many believe this large game to be Star Wars Outlaws. I believe it to be one of the division games. Outlaws would make sense. Like, as in, so, like, I understand why you delay that too right. soon. If it's one of the delation, d- delations, delations, uh, <laughs> if it's one of the division games, oh Actually, boy. 
Fuck this. I got a better answer. Okay. It's Skull and Bones. <sighs> you would have presumed it to be out by March 2024. Perpetually delayed forever. I hope that game gets canceled. And it like, you know, it just becomes one of those things where it's like, what oh, happened? Yeah, what happened? And like, we get a documentary you know, in 2030. And like, thir- like 20 years from now, we're fucking sitting on a porch bitching about something. And like, there's news where it's like, oh, the Skull and Bones game to leak leaked. And like, the, you know, like, yeah, all the source files are leaked somewhere. Yeah. And we're like, it, but it, <laughs> the, it's like two companies to, oh my God, did you see the source files leaked for the Skull and Bones game? That, and then everybody else goes, yeah, but nobody gives a shit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it'd be like the them finding that landfill right in the desert that had all the ET cartridges. Yeah, but it'd be for a game that was so over mass produced that nobody gives a shit. They found a landfill of it. It's gonna be one of those things that leaks, and then there'll be a news article and be like, "This is <laughs> this was the beginning of the end for Ubisoft, and this is a perfect example why Ubisoft doesn't exist anymore." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here's the last thing they were working on before they they collapsed. <laughs> Potential art for Assassin's Creed Red has seemingly appeared on the LinkedIn profile of one of the game's writers. Potential WoW leaks ahead of BlizzCon. I really don't want to talk about these, but I'm going to read them anyway. All right, we can skip it. Nope, fuck it. You put it in here. Listen, there was beautiful screenshots, and I was like, you know what? There were decently fake screenshots. Okay, well, you know, let's give some credit where credit's due. Someone put in a lot of time to try to fucking bamboozle us. Or somebody asked AI how to do it. Fine. Avaloran expansion, new content, Avaloran, the distant lands of Avaloran lay beyond the western horizon of Azeroth's storming seas, isolated for millennia. Those that call those enchanted kingdoms at home have relied upon the living world beneath them, bound to sacred oaths and divided by old hatreds. Traumatic reading. My name is David Hayter. I don't, actually, I don't know what David Hayter sounds like now that I think about it. Who knows? He does me. Yes, that's probably true. I do want to eventually. I don't. I don't you know, somebody's gonna lie to me and be like, "You have a great voice. Why don't you do?" Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, listen, I don't. I don't. I have no professional voice. This is a, a hobby and a joke. But that being said, ooh, five three, good double. Um, when I hear. This is a WoW related. Yeah. When I hear the intros to a lot of like the esports hype videos, right? Yeah. The welcome to this competition. It's the MDI. It's the great push. It's arena. It's whatever. Or some people's hype videos themselves. Mm -hmm. None of the casters, and this is not like a direct shot because they are very, they're very knowledgeable in what they do. Yeah. yeah. So like they should be casting. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. But they need to like pay that one dude on TikTok or something that just has, yeah. like, a good voice to do the overwrite for their trailer so it actually sounds badass. A good caster doesn't necessarily mean good VO. Right. Doesn't necessarily make your best hype person. Yeah. You can use their clips throughout it, like, when they mm-hmm. go, uh, uh, something along the lines of, like, uh, I'm trying to think of a scenario that makes sense. Down to the last second of every group. And then they play the clip of two teams being like two seconds off of each other. Like, oh my god, I can't believe it. It's like, yeah, you can have that person and then have and then actually play the clip of them doing it. Like, mm-hmm. that, that makes sense to me. But don't have them read the script. It just doesn't, yeah. doesn't do the same for me. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so speaking of more WoW leaks, uh, Agorand. I'll do this one. It's silly. Charged with the defense of this harsh desert plateau. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> oh, the furious Agora have ruled over their earthen domain with a brutal efficiency. As new threats arrive, the unity of these once unwavering Goliaths has been fractured, giving rise to a conflict that sunders the region. Can you imagine if the Goliaths were so unwavering these damn here new outsiders they come into our area? <laughs> Imagine if that's what they sound like. Fucking wild. You never know. That's oh, true. I'm always for a, a thing you see and then sounds not how you expect. Yeah. It always is. Always good. 
Kaz Algar nestled in secluded mountain crags, this roaring canyon surges with devastating elemental power suppressed by the constructs of an ancient facility. Known for their hardened na- na- yeah, nature and mastery of the skies, the storm riders of Kaz Algar have forged a unique legacy from atop their airy strongholds. Uh, something about birds and a place called the Everward. <laughs> <laughs> Like that, that one had a paragraph. So we'll see. BlitzCon is happening uh, next weekend. We'll be talking about it on the podcast. Matt will hate me because the WoW next, what's the next demo, like the what's next stage show, will be happening at 4.30 Eastern. 4.30 Eastern. Friday. Friday. Oh, okay. And then it goes from WoW to Overwatch to whatever, to whatever, to whatever. So how long is that going to fucking be? Probably like an hour. Oh, okay. They'll they'll do like the what's uh, like the what's next. Here's the trailer. Here we're gonna talk about some stuff. Oh. Here's gonna be questions. Well, that's fine because then I could just say oh BlizzCon and then you you'll just run with it. Sure. <laughs> uh, and then then they'll have like the panels on Saturday where they do a little bit more in depth. I'm sure. Mm. I'm 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 curious. I'm curious uh, what direction they're gonna go with I, things. We'll see. We will see. All right, I, now I'm curious to watch reactions. Oh, uh, to what they they announce more. What they do? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like there's. I mean, with World of Warcraft specifically. Yeah, I feel like something's got to give at some point. Like that game's, it's getting long in the tooth, man. Yeah, and I know, like. They were working on Titan, and then they canceled it. And, you know, like, they were doing all that the good Overwatch stuff. The Overwatch rumor that that's what that became. Yeah, yeah. Blah, 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 But, like, at some point, they just got to, like, call it, you know, and, like, do something. Whether it's, like, a big, big, big overhaul or a migration or, you I know, just want the inhabitants, the inhabitants or... to develop nukes and blow everything. I just feel like they got to rip the bandaid off. I know it's scary. You know, you don't want to give up. Yeah, you don't want to give up that lot, that of lot, money. lot, a lot of money. But like at the same time, you but pull it they, off. Also, they have that new game to talk about. Too. True, the survival one. Or yeah. Whatever. The thing is with WoW though, it's like if you pull off a successful, I'm just going to call it a sequel. WoW two. I mean original wow population numbers is pretty fucking juicy it's true so all right uh now for uh you know all the shorter things that we didn't write full paragraphs on marvel spider-man 2 has sold 2.5 million copies as of a day after its release okay all right lords of the fallen has sold 1 million copies 10 days after launching the Outer Worlds reaches 5 billion copies sold since its release in 2019. Pretty good. Among Us studio Innersloth has announced that it has donated to the relief efforts for Palestinian families. The company's donation went to the Palestine Children's Relief Fund. Insomniac Games will correct a flag error in Marvel Spider-Man 2. In a future patch, Miles Morales' in-game residence features a Cuban flag. But him and his family are from Puerto Rico. Um, among Netflix's 247.1 million subscribers. Let's step back for a second. I just said 247 million subscribers. And what is it at? Twenty dollars. Uh... It went up again. Okay, all right. Uh, if you want 4K streaming, it's twenty three dollars a month. Yeah, get fucked. All right. Of that two hundred forty seven million dollars, um, it's more than that. Two hundred forty seven million subscribers. Yeah, it's a lot more than two hundred forty seven million dollars. That Ooh. that alone would be a lot of money. Less than 1% of those users play games daily, according to data from market analyst firm Aptopia. I, yes, I believe that. 
Uh, it as, it's estimated that Netflix games have been downloaded 70.5 million times worldwide. Amazon Studios Fallout TV series will premiere on April 24th, 2024. Also, um, January, I believe, Masters of the Air is coming out. Which is... The third of the Tom Hanks World War II. TV oh, shows. okay. I was like, what the fuck even is this? Uh, that this one's on the Eighth Air Force, and it is based on the book of the same name, Masters of the Air. Uh, World of Tanks slash World of uh, Warships developer Wargaming has launched a charity initiative to raise funds. For critical medical assistance in Ukraine, I saw that Bruce was playing World of Warships sponsored the other day. Bruce, he's been doing a lot of interesting. He's playing playing Rings of uh, or Return to Moria, that as makes well. Sense. Oh, yeah, with Lawrence and some other people. I didn't see who else. And then, um, what was the other weird thing he was doing? He's playing something with Sark. Does Sark stream anymore? Sometimes, yeah, sometimes. October's Xbox update adds keyboard mapping for controllers and clip champ capture and porting. I don't know what that last part means, but keyboard mapping mapping for the controller is pretty dope. Artisan Studios is setting up a development studio in Saudi Arabia. The Canadian-based company plans to employ over 200 developers in its new offices. Artisan Studios is known for titles such as Super Neptunia RPG, and Astria Ascending. It's also the first company to participate in Saudi Arabia's Ignite program. Saudi Arabia. Doing their Saudi Arabian thing. Polish developer CI Games has revealed that its latest hit, Lords of the Fallen, was its most expensive project to date, with total costs of $66.2 million. Valve is changing the currency used for sales in Argentina and Turkey on Steam to USD next month due to exchange rate volatility. Merka. Super Mario Bros. Wonder is now the fastest selling Mario game in Europe. Capcom has released the results. That's weird. That is weird. That's weird. Uh, Capcom has released the results for the first half of its fiscal year with net sales rising to $498 million, thanks in part to the launch of Street Fighter VI. That is up 53% over last year. That makes sense, though. Here's another, here's a weird one. Here, okay. Not weird. Right. Here's a wild one, as in what the fuck are you spending your money on? Oh, yeah. Meta released its financial results for the three months, three months that ended September 30th. And its VR division performed at an operating loss. This is over three months. An operating loss. Do you want to guess? Operating loss. Over three months. months. It's wild. 1.2 billion. Uh, three point seven four billion dollars. I was going with a five hundred million angle, and then being like, "Yeah, maybe it wasn't that bad." <laughs> they are all right. Factoring in what they make off of their selling their VR headsets okay. and any of their games that they make directly, they are still losing over. They are still spending over one billion dollars a month. I don't, I can't even comprehend that. Like, I don't understand. How do you, what are you spending your money on? Like, you, what the fuck do they have? Can you imagine just in your everyday life? I show up to your house at the beginning of the first of every month. And I, I put a million dollars, a billion dollars on the kitchen table. It actually, it factors out to be one point two five billion a month. I specifically put one point two five billion on your kitchen table, and I look at you and I go, "When I come back here at next month, this better be gone, or I kill you." Like, what do you what do you even do? You're just like, "All right, I got to spend one point two five billion in a month." 
and you're not gonna buy a jet because that's just like uh, fine. I got money, but now it's like it's an upkeep. I mean, like, like how do you, you just... could you could buy five houses, five only, big fucking houses. No, just, just only five houses. That's how fuck the market is. <laughs> five <laughs> average average size houses, forty cars, and still be like, I have like a I few billion. Know. Like I have a like. Uh, I don't even like. It's just so mind blowing. Me, just I don't. Know. I could, I could, I could buy. They better. Be, I could buy that exact amount and still have half a billion to go. They better have like the fucking hollow deck from Star Trek that they're trying to build or something. <laughs> Anyways, try, they're trying to beam people up, and they just keep having to. They keep losing money to hush money for families after they vaporize them trying to beam <laughs> them. <laughs> That's it. I don't know. It's just wild. All right, neither, okay, uh, where was I? Okay, neither NVIDIA's GTX 10 series nor AMD's Radeon RX 5000 series are supported in Alan Wake 2 because those graphics cards do not feature hardware support from mesh shaders. That's weird, right? Weird. That is weird. Timing's it's all, weird. It's almost like I was already planning on buying and did buy a 7800 XT. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that, and I was like, oof, hope he got his graphics card. <laughs> Which I I later read some stuff that it does they do work it's just not well yeah um, the recently revealed new PS5 slim hardware revision requires an internet connection to pair the optional detachable disk drive so I saw this Wednesday morning yes okay and Wednesday morning I have a meeting with one of my guys and it's the other guy I told you about yep. And him and I are always are going back and forth about video game stuff. And yeah, did you see uh, this, did you see this. Yeah, did you see the typical? Did you see this? Can you believe this company's doing this? How do you think this is going to work out? And like doing basically our podcast of of a lot of business side of things, not just like oh man, I enjoyed Spider Man this weekend, or whatever. Um, like we discussed Ryan leaving PlayStation and all the all this stuff, right? And he had been ta- we had been talking about the bullshit blu-ray drive and like where is it and then it came out with a slim and yada 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 yep and he's like oh they're finally doing it and you know he was kind of like happy about it because he's like i don't know if he i think he's gonna still wait for like a pro version instead of buying a slim and to upgrade his current one but yeah um he's talking about it and wednesday morning i see him walking into to me and i just kind of glance at him and kind of smile and he's like what and i was like well, you saw the drive thing, right? And just this double shitting and grins on both our faces, like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> like, couldn't just have it be what the people want it to be. That's ridiculous. Now you can't can't enjoy anything. No, not at all. No. But yeah, so it's been uh, it's been seven days. What you been up to? Oh my god, I've been up to so much. You're gonna fucking lose your mind. I haven't been up to anything. I watched some anime. Mind blown. Uh, listening to some audio books. Blowing my mind still. Uh, got depressed about you know how little free time I have and how you know I got all these boxes of sim racing gear sitting in various corners of my house and and uh, that's uh, that's about it got well, nothing exciting going on it blew my mind yeah I, I, i'll tell you what i want to blow my mind <laughs> out <laughs> uh i'm gonna blow your <laughs> mind please do out of my skull <laughs> please save me <laughs> um yeah that's it what are you up to what do you got going uh on? you know i did the 7800 xt yeah showed up that's it in. looks real pretty it's doing its thing. It's uh, it's stock. It's about as stock as I can get. Yeah, I it's mean, a sapphire made basic card, which is a good way to go. Yeah, it's uh, it's in there. It's running. It's doing its thing. Currently sitting at twelve percent utilization. I've had this up and running <laughs> yeah. as I'm trying to yeah. figure out yeah everything that may or may not cause me problems. Yeah, uh, it's a little nothing, bit of a learning curve. Hopefully, nothing will cause me problems. Alan Wake Two is on the horizon. For me, I'll hopefully be playing that soon. Um, it is the last two months, I think, for me for Game Pass. I need to double check uh, when November rolls around if Man Who Erased His Name is on PC Game Pass. Because if it is, that'll be the next thing I play on PC Game Pass. And probably the last thing for the year. 
Christ. Uh, but uh, I'm going to try a little bit of City Skylines, see if it doesn't run like shit for me. Mm-hmm. Definitely play Alan Wake. Been playing a lot of Spider Man. A do lot of it. Like it? Good? Yes, I do enjoy it. Mm-hmm. There are definitely moments, though, where all of a sudden something is much harder than we than it's been you've been going where difficulty spikes where where it's just like okay we're going to do fight a boss now and you're like okay I'll fight a boss and you're like yeah but you better fucking play defensively or you're going to have a bad time and I'm like uh, I haven't been doing that at all <laughs> I've never once played like that it's like I haven't I've been you know I've played semi defensively of like Okay, I have low health. Just kind of do a little bit more dodging and try to do whatever. Then it's like, no, no, no. This is a scripted. This is how this is going to work. And you're going to perform. Dance, monkey. Dance. <laughs> That's how some of the boss fights uh, feel for me. It's just like, oh, yeah, no, no, you're going to dance now. Now, come on, little puppet. This guy's got three health bars. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, so it's it. sometimes that's a little annoying. Yeah, that could... Uh, no but sometimes concern. it's also just like, okay, understand the phase, and I can turn around and repeat it and do it way faster the second time to get back to where I was, so it's not that bad. Yeah. Uh, and then other times it's like, okay, wait, what the fuck is even going on? Like, this guy moves so fast. And you're like, all right, never mind. Hold on. I'm okay now. Um, so, yeah, I'm actually currently in the middle of one of those. Going to play a little bit of the show probably once the baseball season ends here after the World Series because I'm just Jones in a little bit. But watch the World Series. Playing World of Warcraft, obviously BlizzCon next week, if we haven't mentioned that already for the fifth mm-hmm. time. Uh, and then the season comes out. The new season comes out on the 7th. The Mythic and Raid stuff starts on the 14th. So that'll be uh, time for me to be doing a lot of stuff there. What else am I forgetting? I think that's it. So yeah, a lot of stuff. Still audiobook of Warhammer that I've got going back and forth from work. So a couple other audiobooks. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Tis the season. We're getting into November. It's gonna be hot and heavy. Cold and miserable, but you know. I mean I a lot of games coming out. Prefer the cold. Holidays coming up. You know, Game Snow. Awards around the corner. So Game Awards are around the corner. Cutoffs probably already happened or is about to happen. And, uh, yeah. yeah. It'll be a wild time. Yeah. This, uh, speaking of holidays, Sim Racing Car I haven't used this Black Friday will be one year since I bought my. <laughs> bought the uh the old extrusion rig and it's still in the same place i put it when i got it that just means in five years it'll be complete <laughs> if you keep up with the buy apart every black friday yeah good times <laughs> progress yeah all right then uh we're gonna watch the world series and we'll talk to you guys in seven days bye-bye toodaloo see ya